Does anybody know who this man is on the left of this picture? This is the man who invented the magic bullet. What is the magic bullet? It's an idea that revolutionized medicine. The idea is that you can target the bacteria that cause disease without harming other targets like ourselves, the human host. The man's name is Paul Ehrlich, and what he was describing is what we now think of as the ideal antibiotic. Paul Ehrlich put his idea into practice and in the early 1900s found success in the treatment of the uh, fatal disease, syphilis. The antibiotic revolution really took off with the work of this man, Sir Alexander Fleming, who discovered perhaps the most famous antibiotic of them all, penicillin. It's no exaggeration to say that the work of these two great men has saved the lives of millions of people. But their work came with a warning. Sir Alexander Fleming said that if we misuse antibiotics, we create the risk of resistance. He even went so far as to say that if we abuse antibiotics in this way, we must hold ourselves morally responsible for the deaths of everybody who then dies because of an antibiotic-resistant disease. And sadly, it didn't take long for Sir Alexander Fleming's fears to be realized. I could show you graphs from the last few years showing increasing trends in resistance from any, drug, any disease you care to mention. Or I could show you headlines from national news agencies that tell us that drug resistance is now a global threat to our way of life. I could read you quotes from presidents and government ministers that tell us if we take no action, we risk returning to an age when we die from infection caused by routine surgery or a scratch from a family pet. One, if I could choose one image to show you that puts this into context, it would be this one. This is from a government report commissioned by the UK last year. The numbers you are looking at are not predicted cases of antimicrobial resistance by 2050. These are deaths. 10 million deaths every year. That's the population of London. More than cancer and diabetes combined. Make no mistake, we have failed the legacy of Paul Ehrlich and Sir Alexander Fleming. The age of the magic bullet is ending. Why has the magic bullet failed? Three reasons. One, we use antibiotics when we don't need to. Most of the antibiotics we use are in the farming industry on animals that aren't even sick. Or we don't use enough antibiotics when we should use more. Two, antibiotics are not a new threat for bacteria at all. They've been coping with chemical attack from competing bacteria or fungi in their environment since they evolved. Most of the antibiotics we use originate from these same organisms. And three, the pharmaceutical industries can't cope. It takes 10 years to make a new drug, to which resistance can occur in less than two. A tiny percentage of the drugs that we actually test are effective against their target, and of those, a tiny percentage have no secondary harm to us, the human host, a prerequisite for the magic bullet. And the cost of producing a new antibiotic is vast. And in a market economy, if there is no financial incentive to produce a new drug, it won't be made. There is something we can do. Of course, education has its role to play. You have your role to play in the responsible use of antibiotics. And we need a global, unified policy to meet this challenge. I'm going to tell you about a technology that we're using in our lab here at the London School that can help to not only rearm the concept of the magic bullet, but perhaps move beyond it altogether. The technology is called TRADIS, not to be confused with a well-known time-traveling device, <laughs> although I am a doctor. The technology is called TRADIS, it's science fact, not science fiction, and it works like this. It stands for Transposon-Directed Insertion Site Sequencing. 
Let's break that down. Transposon, insertion, sequencing. Life comes from DNA. And in regions of DNA, we have genes. Genes make proteins. Transposons, when I was at university, they were called jumping genes. Tiny pieces of DNA that, with the help of an enzyme, can integrate at random at any point along the genome of an organism. Now, if that transposon lands in the middle of a gene, it interrupts its sequence so it can no longer make the protein it codes for. What we've created is a mutant that's healthy in every other respect, except it's lost the function of this one gene. Transposon insertion. Now, we know which genes have received a transposon because we sequence our, our, our DNA. Transposon insertion and sequencing. What Tradis does is it takes this idea and makes it bigger. So we bombard our bacterial DNA with millions of copies of transposons. Now we have a whole library of mutants, which each have a defective function of one gene. Now, the first gift that Tradis gives us is a list of all of the essential genes in a bacteria. Some genes a bacteria can live without, and others it can't. These are the essential genes. And we know that if we can target these essential genes, or essential proteins, we kill the organism. We now have a hit list to go for when we're designing new antibiotics. It's the ultimate embodiment of the magic bullet. It's a smart magic bullet. <laughs> but Tradis can do even more. What if we take our transposon library and we treat it with antibiotics? Now what we reveal are not just the essential genes, but all the genes that bacteria is using to beat our antibiotics. Now we have a laser-guided, heat-seeking smart magic bullet <laughs> that not even antibiotic-resistant bacteria can hide from. And really, that's where the idea of the magic bullet should conclude. It doesn't get much better than that. What I would like to see, and what Tradis can help to achieve, is to move beyond this idea entirely. Don't kill the bacteria. The easiest thing to evolve resistance against is one target and one bullet. It's easy for the bacteria to hide the target, evade the bullet, even two, three, four bullets. A weapon that uses a dozen bullets against a dozen targets all at the same time, that's a game changer. And we have this weapon. Your immune system and my immune system have been keeping us alive all our lives. The only way you know about it is when it sometimes goes wrong. And it goes wrong because sometimes bacteria are in locations they shouldn't be, or they replicate too quickly, or they produce toxins that kill our immune cells. Let's go back to our transposon library. Now we take this library and we put it into an animal model of infection. And at the end of our infection, we sequence our bacteria. Now, what we have located now are what we call virulence genes, not the essential genes. We don't want to kill the bacteria. But if we can target these essential genes, we disarm the bacteria, and our immune system takes care of the rest. No more bullets. I'd like to return to the work of these two giants of medicine, and I think of the great optimism they must have felt when they discovered the age of antibiotics. We messed that up. We owe it to them. We owe it to all the future lives that we get it right this time. Thank you.